Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're gonna learn about subqueries. They're basically queries inside other queries, and you can use them to do really cool things. Today we're gonna list all of the customers that have above average orders. So you take all the orders, you figure out what the average one is. That's one query, right? With the average, we just learned about that a couple days ago. And then having that value, then we can run another query that'll figure out, okay, give me a list of all the orders or all the customers that have orders above that value. And you can put the two of those things together into one query. And that's what subqueries are. And we'll learn more in just a few minutes. Today's question comes from Riley in Madison, Wisconsin, one of my platinum members. Riley says, how can I generate a list of customers who have placed above average orders? For example, if the average order size in my system is $100, I wanna see which customers have placed orders larger than that. What is the best way to do this in Microsoft Access? Now, I'm gonna consider this an expert level video. What is expert? Well, for me, that's sandwiched between beginner and developer. So you don't need VBA code to do this. You don't have to be a programmer, but it's a little bit beyond the basics. So let me show you a few things you should know first. You should definitely know how Access Query Criteria works. This is a beginner topic. I'd like you to watch my video I did a couple days ago on D-Average. It's one of the domain aggregate functions like D-Lookup or D-Max. D-Average lets you take them the average value of a bunch of records. And I'm gonna show you how to do it first with D-Average, which is the easy way. Then I'm gonna show you subqueries, which are a little bit more difficult, but they work a lot better. So, but watch this first. You don't have to watch this first, but you'd be better off if you understood this first. You'll need to know some basic SQL, real simple stuff but go watch this first if you don't know anything about SQL. You should understand how aggregate queries work. And I'm gonna use my invoicing database, which is part of my tech help free template. Go watch this so you understand how my order entry system is built, right? I got orders and order details and invoices and customers and contacts and all that good stuff. These are all free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. Go watch all this stuff, then come on back and we'll talk about subqueries. All right, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can get it off my website if you want to. In here, I got customers. Customers have orders, right? Orders have order details. You add all these line items up and then you get the total for each order. I have a query out here called order summary queue. And this basically takes the orders and the order detail queue, which has the line item totals. It's an aggregate query that sums them all up and that's how you get the total for each order right there, okay? Now, if I want to figure out what the average of all of these orders are, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can use the dAverage function, which let's just throw it here on the main menu, design view. We'll come over here. We'll say average order value, right? We'll open this guy up. We'll change the name to average order value. This will now be currency. And in here, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it better. Shift F2, oh, my, my zoom window's huge. Let me resize that. All right, this will simply be equals D average of the order total from the order summary queue. All right, no other parameters. So I'm gonna look at the entire table or query. Hit okay, All right? Let's save it, close it, reopen it. And there's my average order value. And if you look at all your orders, yeah, it's about, that seems about right. Okay. So now I want to make a query that has just the orders over that. Now I could cheat and I could, if this value is already open, I could just put a, a criteria in a query here, but we don't want to do that. We want to learn how to do this the right way instead of having to rely on a form field, right? Don't get me wrong. This works. And in a pinch, you could do this, but there's better ways that we're here to learn some stuff, right? So let's take this data and pull it into another query and then use the D average in there. Let's try that. So create query design. I'm gonna bring in the order summary query like that. And let's just bring in um, the customer ID, the order ID. And then for the order total, down here for my criteria, I wanna see just the orders over that D average. And you know what? You could put the same thing in here. I wanna see greater than D average of the order total from the order summary queue. So it's gonna run that D average 
and use that value as the query criteria for this column. All right, and I'll save this as, uh, you know, orders over average keyword, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I know I violated my rule. It's supposed to be singular. Okay, I, I break the rule once in a while. It's okay. And actually, it's not okay because if I go to use this in the future and I'm typing in code, I'll get confused. But anyways, we run this and look at that. That works. Those are all of the orders. There's only four of them over the average. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with this method. It's nice and simple. It works. But I'll tell you this. It's going to run slow on very large data sets because here's why. For each record in the order summary query, it's got to run that calculation over and over and over and over again. Remember, we try not to use domain aggregate functions in queries or in continuous forms because this will evaluate for each record. No big deal in this database. I only have like 30 some orders and it's on my local PC. But if you've got 100,000 orders and you're pulling data over the network or heaven forbid over the internet, this is going to take forever to run. So there's got to be a better way. Okay. Now the better way is to evaluate that value there once and then run the query, which kind of is what you would do if you, if you relied on this form. So how do we do this without relying on a form field value? Well, the answer is a subquery. If we did the same thing with a subquery, the subquery runs once, evaluates that value, keeps it in memory, and then uses that as the criteria for the rest of the query, for the parent query. That's how subqueries work. All right, so how do you do a subquery? Well, let's try it again. Let's create query design. Same thing we just did. Bring in the order summary queue. Okay, bring in the order ID, the customer ID. Now, again, we're going to bring in the order total. But down here, we're going to write a subquery as the criteria. All right, again, I'll zoom in so you can see it. Now, this will be an SQL statement, and instead of D average, we'll use the actual average function, which is an SQL function. So we'll say greater than. Now, subqueries always have to be inside a parentheses. So I'll put my parentheses there. All right, and we'll go back inside. And it's going to be a select statement. So select the average of order total from order summary Q. That's a standard SQL statement, just like we'd write it right okay this whole thing gets evaluated first just one time and then that gets used as the criteria so let's save this i'll call this orders over average subquery q so they're both in there for you and if i run this now boom same results but trust me i'm not going to build a giant database so i can show you the Trust me, I've been doing this for almost 30 years, well, over 30 years now. This will run a whole ton faster than this guy will, the other guy. Where's the other guy? This guy. This is the slow guy. And yeah, on this system, they both run the same speed because there's only 30 records. Okay, so that's what subqueries do. Now, if you take a look at the SQL, if you want to look at the SQL in here, all right, this one is just select customer ID, order ID, order total from order summary queue where... The order total is greater than, and there's my D average. Okay. The other one's SQL, this guy with the, with the subquery in it, looks a little more complicated. Everything else is the same except for that. There's the subquery. It's got a select average, and you can use sum in here. You can use max. You can use any of the SQL functions, right, from order summary queue. And then this gets evaluated first just one time, and then the rest of the query will run much, much faster. Okay. If you want to learn more about subqueries, I cover them in Access Expert Level 32. There's subqueries. I teach you how to do rank median mode, right? It's e it's difficult to calculate median, but if you know how to do subqueries, it's much easier because you can do that thing in the middle and then in, in, in feed, use that to feed your results, right? But there you go. That's how subqueries work. There's lots and lots you can do with them. I, again, I cover them more in, in a lot more detail in my full course, but uh, that's enough to get you started, right? There's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. 
and Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. 
Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.